Hello, this is Joss Reed, and welcome to the Comics Conspiracy Podcast. Hello and welcome to the Comic Conspiracy episode number 66 uh, post this Comic Con weekend. This is the week of, uh, what is this, July 16th, 2012. My name is Ryan Higgins and we have some surviving people that uh, survived The Walking Dead, returned from Comic Con weekend, and we're here to talk about some of that stuff. So let's let's start this. Brock, you're giving me the eyeball. Yeah, I had a whole different intro in mind in my head, like live from SDC. Oh wait, no. we're not there. This yeah. is the aftermath. What's your name? <clears throat> Brock Sager. Who's next to him? Omar. Uh, who's across the table from him? Toby. Who's next to him? Evil Charlie. Evil Charlie. Oh, yeah, you got this, yeah. this Star Trek goatee Whoa. mirror yes. mirror thing going on. Yes, yes, Charlie I Charlie goes to San Diego and he's turned evil? Yeah. Evidently. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, interesting. Uh, down the far end, we got uh, Jim's here for a, one last possible. <laughs> for a while. Hello, hello. <laughs> and then next to him, returning, Lane. Hello. Woo-hoo. All right. So... Uh, New record, yeah. There's seven people on the seven mic now, people. so that's that's fine. Yeah, that's cool. That's a lot of people. So we'll we'll, we'll we got like a couple news like, things to talk about. We need chicks, but we this need like is a girl. Don't no. look at me. Don't look at me. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you looking at me? We yeah, got, no, no, no. Nice girl right there, that's a nice picture, Omar. Omar yeah, got a lot chilly. of pictures of girls from San Diego. She's but, some chilly. We'll, but we'll get to that in a minute. We'll get to that in a minute. Which one, Crystal? No, not Crystal. No, not my friends, bro. Eddie. Thank you. <laughs> hey, Omar, your ringtone should be I cosplay and I know it. Stop talking, bro. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. Just, just stop talking. Okay, so this past weekend was San Diego Comic-Con, which is a thing that exi- has existed for many years and in the last decade or so has gotten ridiculously huge. When was it founded? I have no fucking clue. 1970. Um, there you go. Yes. Yeah. Is that trivia now? Oh, no, it was on Our Valued Customers. It was one of their little art pieces. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> and they gave the answer. Nice. It's pretty funny. All right, there you go. So uh, the last couple of years, uh, Comic-Con has just ballooned, as, as probably everyone knows, to be this ridiculously huge, giant convention of occasionally comic books, but mostly movies and pop culture and video games and TV shows and all that shit. But that stuff's crap because it's about comic books originally. So, Well, it's we funny should- because someone, I think, tweeted earlier something about it. Adam Hughes retweeted, and I'm trying to find it, and my phone is not working. <laughs> but something about... At this point, at Comic Con, all the people that used to make fun of us and beat us up are there now too. Right, thinking right. it's all cool. Yeah, and of course, yeah, yeah, it's the way Comic Con's been, especially the last few years. I mean, last year was the first year I went. Um, I know Omar, uh, you, Charlie, Toby, and Lane. You guys have been going forever. Um, Jim, I don't actually know. Have you ever been to Comic Con? Uh, no, I've no. never been able to participate because I've been too busy working. No. Oh. Yeah, Jim has a real job. Where, yeah. where, 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 where. I've, never, I've never been. Brock's never been. One day. One day you guys I just need to do a party scene. That's what I need to do. I just Why are you looking at me for a party scene? No, he looks, for a girl, he looks at me. For a party scene, he looks at you. What's huh. going on there? Well, I, I, I don't want to look at Charlie every time. <laughs> <laughs> but I think Because I'll be busy looking at the bookshelf next to you. Ryan, I mean, Ryan I mean, looks weird with those headphones if on. If you want something big, you should look. <laughs> this is true. Wow. <laughs> Where were you hiding again when you got smuggled in for fucking Firefly shit? I was doing a Jabba walkie behind Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're basically going to we're going to talk about a couple of news things, then move right into just stories because I got to hear it because it sounds like you guys had a blast. So let, let's talk about the only comic book news that mattered this whole weekend. The only um, news that mattered. Period from the con. No, I, the Marvel stuff was pretty good, but but let's talk about the only comic book news that mattered for the weekend. Now, Image announced a bunch of generic sounding tr- books are coming out from a bunch of high profile mm. creators, and that's all well and good, but. Well, whatever. I don't care. Neil Gaiman's putting out a new Sandman miniseries. And that is the end of the podcast. Nothing else needs to be said. It's the best news of the year. Um, Sandman's the best comic ever. Neil Gaiman's the best comic creator ever. The end. And it's thanks a for coming. Prequel, All right, thanks right? for coming. See you guys later. That'll be it for the week. Yeah, okay, bye. thanks. Bye. It's the story that yeah. happened before, before he, he gets captured one. in Preludes yeah. and Nocturnes. Yes. Yeah. yeah, this is this is being uh, by the oh, so hilarious people on, on Twitter and, and the haters as, as before Sandman. Well, uh, as they, a they put jab, it out there with Before Watchmen. What do you expect? As a little jab of Before Watchmen. Um, so a little backstory to this. Uh, Neil Gaiman actually five years ago was going to write a Sandman miniseries for the 20th anniversary of Sandman. Uh, and then uh, him and DC couldn't come to an agreement on payments and a bunch mm-hmm. of other stuff. So the project kind of got shelved. Now it seems like it's actually going to happen for 2013, which is the 25th anniversary. Uh, 420? 
It is going to be animated by, or animated, it's going to be illustrated by J.H. Williams, who is awesome. Yes. Currently doing Batwoman. Um, It's a six-issue miniseries published by Vertigo. It's about Morpheus before the start of Sandman number one and how he got there as trapped in a... Trapped in that glass, that glass uh, ball. Yeah. So, I really have nothing else to say about this except it's going to be the best comic of 2013. I just love how everything that gets announced, you have fun saying this is going to be the best comic book ever. Well, it's Neil Gaiman's <laughs> Sandman. It's the best comic book to publish of the year. Like, uh, like there's nothing else will come out. Yeah, I don't care. There's quite a bit though on other yeah. stuff that you don't necessarily mean that. But this time I actually do. Yeah, no, yes, I do. <laughs> but you know what I mean, though. Like usually you use it, and now it doesn't sound special anymore because you used it so many times. Yeah, this is this is true, right? Yeah, yeah. sometimes. Yeah. Like like we know you actually mean it this time, but it really doesn't sound like it anymore. You but have to come up with a new phrase for when you actually mean it. I guess. Like this is the super duper scooper, whatever. Did you say super duper scooper? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Super. But because <laughs> but because we know Ryan, and we know that he really means it this time. Yep. Yes. It's so like, it's all those previous times, just forget it. Yeah. <laughs> now, now, Charlie, you do realize that this might damage our absolutes. What does this do to our absolutes, Charlie? What? I mean, they already put out like the volume five with some different collection. I don't remember what's in that one. No, but, no. I mean, they've what? been continuing the absolutes with anything and everything they can put in an absolute. <laughs> no, no. You, so all this Neil, means Neil, is Neil there'll be a volume more. six or seven. You never heard of a Sandman Zero? Sandman Zero. Oh, oh yeah, oh. Sandman Zero. Well, that was another. Like that, no, no, zero. that was another joke that the haters had, right? Yeah. Sandman Zero. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, this, this could be a a thin, you know, seventy five dollar absolute, not quite the hundred dollar, hundred twenty five. Okay. The rest of the yeah. Sandman. It's all good. <laughs> if J. H. Williams' art on Batwoman and Neil Gaiman's writing on Sandman can combine into this perfect thing that you only see very rarely in comics, with like. Jeff Loeb and Jim Lee on Hush was one of those. Um, Judd Winnick Mark and Gillen March, yeah, yeah. on Catwoman. Um, yeah. Mark Wade and Alex Ross on Kingdom Come. I mean, mm. occasionally you just get these perfect combinations of storyteller and artist, and it just sort of sets this almost a focal point within the comic community where you can always point to those books as that's something you need to check out. Sure. That's sort of as high as the comic medium can go yeah. almost, so. This has a lot of promise to it. It's Sandman. I have nothing else to say. It's going to be amazing. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I think Jim does. It's, it's time to pick up the Sandman hardcovers, I guess. Oh, yeah? Wow. You have to. Those absolutes are so good. Yes, so yes beautiful. they are. What's funny is I have ink to prove it. <laughs> I know. Well, let's talk about... I don't the... want to know where. On my back. <laughs> let's talk about probably the only other... I don't want to know where. <laughs> let's talk about probably the only other big comic news from Comic-Con. I mean, did you guys... I mean, I guess we can get to this when we're there, or when we talk about you guys actually being there. But did you guys get that there was a lot newsworthy stuff from Comic Con? Because from being on the internet and reading the stuff, I mean, stuff happened, sure, but very, very few announcements comparatively to even last year, which was which was light. Well, last year had the new Fifty Two sort of going for it, yeah. just because that was. The big protests going on and everything else. It was like three protests. We have to talk about protests. Those three people, right? Those Christian people. Yellow people. They were back. Oh Oh, my! Neil before Zod. No, I love that. Incredible. No, I like. I like. This is this is the story part that we were going to get to. I I love Galactus is nigh. Yes. Ah! (laughs) That guy was right next to him. That was fucking (laughs) awesome. I was blown oh, away. Man. The cops, there there was almost altercation between the cops. And ah, the I Jesus saw a couple of them almost happening in front of Because too. they kept doing it right in front of, they kept putting their yellow, big yellow black signs right in front of like the train, cra- the, yeah. the, the, the crossing, and the officers are doing what they can to keep things safe. There are hundreds, literally hundreds of people crossing at one point in uh. time where only maybe 20 people can cross. Uh. And these fucking guys were on their bullhorns. I was like, dude, yeah. I just want to stomp They're you the in your horns. head. I am from Satan. Fucking Satan behind well, there's, me. There's one, so- there's one hat to sign up that said Satan for president and was smiling the whole time yeah, in front yeah. of him. All I have to say, I went to the zombie thing and I have to walk through all those Christian people. I was like, what? Come on, man. It's fucking stupid. <laughs> we'll get to that stuff in a second. Um, the only other big thing was, I mean, Marvel made all their announcements of basically the next 27 movies that they got coming out. Phase two. Yeah. Uh, Iron Man three, which we already knew was that uh, that Fourth of July or um, that May weekend mm-hmm, in mm-hmm. two thousand thirteen. Mm. Uh, Thor: The Dark World, 
Yeah. Directed by Alan Taylor of Game of Thrones. Mm-hmm. Uh, November 8th, 2013. So that's Thor number two with the entire cast, or most of the cast, uh, returning. Um, Captain America, Winter Soldier. Hell oh, yeah. 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 Ed Brubaker's oh. reaction on on Twitter was like, holy shit. Like, he had no idea that this uh-huh. was happening. So, mm-hmm. yeah. April 4th, 2014. Guess what I'm doing for my birthday? Because uh, that's the day after my birthday. So, Captain America 2, Winter Soldier. 2014, April. That'll be good. You're, you're going to be making it's your mortgage payment. interesting that went straight mm. there, though. I mean, What's that? No, I mean, it's interesting that went straight there. Yeah. Well, um, Winter Soldier, for those who don't know, uh, is Bucky, having long since died in World War II, now come back to life as a like a Russian uh, like Soviet spy that kind of comes in and out of... Bucky was brainwashed right, by right, the Russians right. and is now turned into an assassin for half, the Russians. Half cyborg guy that's pulled in and out of uh, you know Stasis. deep freeze right yeah. to come out to do these jobs. So. Which I mean, they they set it up decently in the film to mm-hmm. have something like this potentially happen yeah. and use the you know Winter Soldier character. So a little side question, really quick, because I stopped watching Earth's Mightiest Avengers. Um, like after you can't answer this then or it's mighty avengers after like the first seven episodes did they ever go back to that yet like 20 uh, episodes later not in season one i really? not i haven't seen season two yet at all i am i have not seen since they restarted a few episodes ago but i heard winter soldier was in an episode nice. so and that was actually a piece of news that came from comic-con as well that we can i could talk about real quickly apparently according to jeff Loeb, earth's mightiest heroes is not actually canceled this Avengers Assembled, which is a new show, is kind of like the Justice League yeah. Unlimited. Yeah. Hmm. It's just continuing Earth's Mightiest Heroes, the characters, the plots, the creative teams, the uh, voice actors. They're just, like Justice League Unlimited, expanding the cast to a much more wider uh, Marvel universe. Sure. So, cool. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. Smart. If See, I, I hate the spin just because there's a part of me like, that's cool. As long as he means they're actually continuing it and not adapting it to be closer to because everything they originally said was they were trying to go for a more kid friendly like ultimate spider-man avengers and hulk and that what i read sounds like that may not be exactly true um but i mean we won't know i'll give it the benefit of the doubt because earth's many series has been so good um, I know that Hulk Agent of Smash. Well, I know they recently solicited the um, second season of that on DVD as the final season. So, oh, really? it's the final season of Earth's Mightiest Heroes. Oh well, no, yeah. I, I understand so that. I'm just spinning it as a new show, but it's the same show. It's just a new. I name. know. I, I understand that, especially like this isn't on Cartoon Network, but I know that Cartoon Network's rule of thumb is once you reach the 50 episode mark, if you don't retitle it and name it and everything, your show gets canceled. <laughs> Did you know that they've renamed Young Justice back to Young Justice for the reruns? So I missed <laughs> one of the rerun episodes to see the DC animated short, which was that that no. Batman of Shang Chi that or that back that Batman of China short, which was fucking amazing. They didn't rename it back. They're actually showing the final episodes of Young Justice again. Oh, is that what it is? Yes. We, we can back on back on track. This is not the cartoon conspiracy. Can we talk How SDC? annoying. It's all the same medium, buddy. It all just yeah. goes through. I, I, I understand. And you, you breathe get it, you smell it. it but when you we smell get off it, target. No, you get you stay on target. So, so last, th- last thing we talked about was Captain America 2. Yeah. All right. What's sold. next? Well, okay. Well, okay. Here's something that clearly won't have any animated aspects to it. Okay. Um, August first, two thousand fourteen, is Guardians of the Galaxy featuring Groot and Rocket Raccoon. Clearly, those will not be animated. <laughs> of course so. not. They're gonna fucking train a raccoon. No, and fucking they are gonna around. be animated. That's the joke. <laughs> <laughs> um, August fourth. Or- I'll be excused. I've been on three hours of sleep for like the last I don't know how many days. That's okay. That's hey, okay. I'm stoked. Guardians of the Galaxy, August 1st. We talked about this as a rumor, but official. Hey. Star- Star-Lord, Drax the Destroyer, Gamora, Groot, Rocket Gamora. Raccoon. Google these people. It is going to be... People have asked... I had a few people ask me on Twitter, what the hell is Guardians of the Galaxy? <laughs> I really don't know how else to explain it other than it's Marvel's Star Wars. I mean, that. Re- I mean, St- Green Lantern has that to a degree as well. Mm. So kind of think of this as like the flip side. This is Marvel's... Dirty space stuff. It's their, it's well, their space. It's, it's their space stuff. It's their space pirates. Yeah. See, to me, it's 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 not really close to Green Lantern. It's sort of closer. <laughs> go back to it. Closer to sort of like Firefly and that kind yeah. of stuff, where you have sort of the ragtag group of people who are all brought together, who typically have a pretty good moral compass, but they don't necessarily let that get in the way of mm-hmm. 
right. doing things right. outside of the law. So, right. well, this isn't the first incarnation of Guardians of the Galaxy either. They've no. been around since the seventies. Oh yeah. So you know, uh, for them to bring in Rocket Raccoon and everything, I think you know I, I'm willing to give it a, a try. That's for sure. Yeah, it's the new Do team. Do we know who's doing the voice? No, they haven't said anything yet. So we'll we'll find out more soon. Um, it's, I mean August fourth or August first, two thousand fourteen. That's that's two years away. That's not yeah, that I long know. as far as the movies go. Um, Edgar Wright was also there. He showed off a test reel for Ant Man. So apparently, Ant Man actually is going to happen. But I'm still holding my it? breath. No, no, the Ant Man. Yeah, the uh, test footage. The test footage for the irredeemable. Yeah, I didn't make it into anything in Hall H. Oh, are you talking about the Giant Man, Ant Man uh, exclusive from Hero Clicks that was sold out the first fifteen to thirty minutes uh, that not very many people bought? Oh, I got one. Nice. <laughs> well, there was one other bit of TV what the news. F- did you just say there was one other bit of sort of TV news? But I'm not actually going to really give this much of anything because a possible Firefly reunion show and or new reboot has been a rumor for a decade. So until I hear official. It's not. I don't. So, it's Charlie, can not you take, news. Can you no, take over for was, this? That was on Bleeding Cool. I have friends of Bleeding Cool, and that's not true. That's no. Not um, the the only thing that so the Science Channel recently, I guess, picked up Firefly, mm-hmm. and they're doing a ten year anniversary sort of like special, not new stuff, more right. like interviews with various people. Um, they actually recorded the panel for the 10-year reunion. The show on Sci-Fi Channel. So they'll be showing, the, not Sci-Fi, Science Channel. No, Sci Channel. Yeah. <laughs> but you'll see be seeing Charlie on it. <laughs> the Sci Channel? No, on the, the Science Channel. Whatever it's called. Yeah. Well, any event. Um, Three hours. Five no. days. <laughs> it, it, was, it was a great panel. I enjoyed it. There was no... Real spectacular news, except for the fact that it sounds like there's a lot more pre-Serenity comics coming and post-Serenity comics coming, which is new since they hadn't done anything post-Serenity in the movie in comics or anything. So, cool. So that's the only thing new. Firefly Serenity is more comics, right? Official. Yeah. All right. I guess the best way to do this is. Let's break this guy down by days. That's the only way to do it. I want to hear. I, I, no, is that the right I, way to do it? We no, can't. I think I think maybe just go around. And they just all talk blur a little together. Bit about it. it is because one giant everything blur. will connect. I got it. Make your own adventure. Called. Just jump around, man. Choose your own adventure. Well, okay, let's well, do this. Someone hand me and make your own adventure, but while we're at it. And <laughs> <laughs> well, let, let's let's start with this. What day did you guys go down, Omar? Every day. No, what, what day did Wednesday. you? What did, <laughs> did you physically leave? Oh, I, I, I got there uh, Wednesday evening. Okay, and I, I got back Sunday evening. Okay, Charlie, you left Wednesday like... morning is when I officially got to San Diego. Okay, okay, Toby, Wednesday, a uh, Wednesday night I morning. Think. No, morning it, it was morning. Okay, well, I went first flight. Okay, Lane, which when is you... a blur too. Lane, when's your water? That's bro. a Chris Claremont. Come on, man, novel. let's go. Lane, when did you get there? I flew in Tuesday morning. Okay, oh wow, you're here early. Um. And you guys well, all left Sunday? Well, well, Lane has to work on Tuesday. Yeah, so. I was oh, okay. helping set up. Oh, cool. Cool. Good guy. Um, do this without talking over each other a bunch. <laughs> tell, tell me about... Well, who was there for... Okay, I got I to start with preview night. Who was there for preview night? You, you were there for preview yeah, All of you were there for preview yeah. night. Okay. I fucking told you. I, I, know, went, I came I to your shop beforehand to I say know. hi. <laughs> I'm going. <laughs> yeah, later. <laughs> hi, Ryan. I'm going this now. This is for me. You. I'm the only one okay. that fucking bought my comics and read most of them this week that was there. This is for the all fan. you motherfuckers. Oh, fuck you. <laughs> what? <laughs> you got your pile over in your Lego bag. I saw it. Yeah, and I'll have it read by tomorrow. Tomorrow, yeah, basically. You will. You will. You I'll, will. Have, I'll have this week's re- books read by the time the Guardians of the Galaxy movie comes out, maybe. So, uh, let's see. Well, one day. I, I have books from one two day. years yeah, ago. Yeah, when it comes out on Blu-ray. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so why don't, um, I, I guess just... That's don't, not that far behind. One of you take the lead. Don't um, don't talk over each other too much, and let's let's hear it. And give Lane some, some talk time, because like, he doesn't jump into the give Lane some No, you know, time. honestly, I think Lane should start, because he can yeah. talk yeah. about the build, the build, he, he the build might, that part. He might he's a part of actually... Well, he might remember what happened. <laughs> okay, let's just start with Lane. Lane, take it away. Take it away, Lane. Yeah, uh, go. Let's see, well, I started Tuesday helping out because uh, my friend is um, the rep for Humberto Ramos and Francisco Herrera. So we were there all afternoon setting up a thousand books to get signed and unwrapped and unboxed. Exciting. Yeah, that was, <laughs> man, I uh, need to talk to you about getting my last <laughs> book for my Crimson Bind. So what's the what's the con floor like when there's no one there? 
very hectic. Yeah, <laughs> Is the really? carpet's not even finished in some places. <laughs> the artist alley wasn't even – it was just in boxes. Wow. Um, yeah, I forgot to take a picture this year. I usually do. Um, and it's just table set up. Um, People generally don't I wear I think clothes. the funniest story from, from, that, from that day, though, was – he probably doesn't want me to tell him this, but we were setting up and putting up all the boxes, and Francisco went over and sat ne- on the next table, and the table just broke. <laughs> <laughs> But it's, it was the booth next to us, so we just kind of covered it up. And <laughs> they didn't oh, As you should. <laughs> Jeez. You usually stay breaking tables to like Saturday or Sunday, right? I mean, there was a nice little bump in the table from that right. one. Or, or when the wrestling guys show up. That's yeah. usually when that happens. Too. Oh, did tear up in Action Comics number one? When did you guys see Virgil first? That's always the question at conventions. Dude, Virgil tried to get me to drive him to the airport once. I really? I don't know how to happen. He like, hey, buddy, hey, can yeah. you drive me to the airport? I'm like, what the fuck? It's not a con unless Virgil's there. Yeah, yeah. So. that was a Wizard World LA. Was it? Yeah, yeah. I, that was an interesting one. Virgil, that's wonderful. He's like the Frank Virgil, He's a wrestler in San Francisco. Yeah, but he I likes to get rides from people. <laughs> Vir- Virgil's an internet that's celebrity. Creepy. Yeah. So, uh, I guess so. You guys showed up Wednesday morning, how or Wednesday night uh, to the actual con? What time did you guys get there? Like, like to actually to line well, up? Well, the at least Charlie right? got there before me because he kept calling me. Go, where are you? <laughs> So well, I he know, fucking I, knows. There's oh, no, no other way you're going to get, get ahead of him. you got to jab walk with him everywhere, man. I, Dude, I got to the hotel at like 10.30 or so and um, immediately was refreshing Twitter so I could see what was going on just on Twitter. And there was a Doctor Who panel that was announced that they were going to be doing for Nerd Machine or Nerd HQ, depending wait, on... Wait, wait. I did get ahead of Charlie on Wednesday night, though. I did. I left you. I went further, and further forward in line. I just didn't want to tell you because I couldn't bring you along. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I felt bad. That's why I didn't want to tell you. Any event. Um, so, literally within 15 seconds... All the Doctor Who tickets to this nerd machine thing was gone. Just 15 seconds, boom, gone. And that's after I had already coordinated calling up Toby. I'm like, do you want me to buy you a ticket to this thing? Talk to Lane. Do you want me to buy you a ticket to this thing? Can I just, just touch boom, on that gone. really quick? Sure. How nerd HQ, that dude from fucking... Uh, Chuck. Chuck, the Zach dude, whatever. How fucking genius is that? For him to yeah. set up shop and create a little con with the outside of a con and yeah, actually no, have... So yeah. Great. Incredible but, fucking talent. Like, incredible panels. Like, well, panels... Well, he was making out with... Uh, the ball, uh, Adam not Baldwin. only him, not only and, uh, him. Nathan Fillion. Yeah, he said the Nathan Fillion got, was got a goal. Tongue. That was a good one. He said. Yeah, he was telling us all about it. <laughs> oh, cool. He's gay. Well, no, no, it was for charity. He's like it was for like charity. Yeah. Was nerd, nerd machine, nerd HQ. Everything was for charity. They sold tickets at twenty dollars a pop to yeah. these various panels, and <laughs> all proceeds from it went to charity. That's dope. Yeah, it's incredible because their production, their production, their setup, and everything. Like, if you go inside, first of all, for anybody that has not been to the con and saw how the gas lamp just becomes an extension of a Comic Con, it is incredible. Because for the most part, all the hotels are bought out by all the big circuits, whether it be ABC, Fox, HBO, blah 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 blah, and then all of the restaurants that are applied or connected to the hotels, or if they're not, they're bought out by some other like lower levels, be IGN, mm-hmm. uh, you know, and all these other different companies that want to get in or are part of the whole pop culture phenomenon mm-hmm. that we call Comic Con. That's though it's not comics, and then these things have evolved. I think especially the last two years mm-hmm. that their setup and their production value, and obviously how much money they really put in these things, blow me away. I mean, and almost zero lines, assigned seats, like fucking ridiculous. That's why it sells out. Yeah. yeah. I think it's been more like four years it since four years? it really started just ballooning outside the con. Because I remember um, the show Eureka always had the Cafe cafe Diem sort of restaurant on the show. So one of the restaurants would transform into Cafe Diem. And that's been up until this year. I think that's been doing that for like five years. Cartoon Network used to um, convert a pizza place. They didn't this year. But yeah. used to have the Cartoon Network pizza place. Um, South Park set up two years ago or one year ago i don't remember they like recreated south park in one empty lot that was last year um i know the year before that they had a big jackass party at a different empty lot for mm-hmm. the oh, new jack where so, was i <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's, three years ago remember yeah I don't know. but it, it's just one of those things where you sort of like you were talking about going down even if you couldn't get into the con 
That's there is so much that goes on. I mean, some of the best stories I've heard from the con was like a couple of years ago, Adult Swim was going around with an ice cream truck. And they'd oh, have very, that was awesome. Yeah. I remember that. Seth Green was passing out that ice cream. Yeah, yeah. yeah that was yeah, last, last year. year. I got pictures. Yeah. Yeah, a creepy Thank picture you. of Seth Green handing you a freaking ice cream. That was gr- yeah, that yeah. was creepy. Well, they also had the best parties last year, yeah. by the way. They had passes for like four every like four passes for every night, and they had mm-hmm. different ice cream flavors or some bullshit. And yet, if you had a, if you saw like their some of their is it Adventure Time people coming running around mm-hmm. too, you can like tap them and get a party ticket. So yeah, but yeah, it's just there's tons to do there. You don't even have to get into the con at this point. Well, the con's gotten so big, I mean, it can't be contained within mm-hmm. the convention center anymore. So, I mean, it has to has to spill out. Yeah. So. Yeah, and that's why I think it won't go to Vegas. That's why it won't leave San Diego. Because I think San Diego, actually, they're starting to make money. Well, like, say, like, from the last four years. Because all of these people, they're just bought out. Straight out bought out for the last, like, four or five days. Their business, um, you know, they have certain drinks that they can serve, you know, for free, mostly just well shit. But then all the other stuff is obviously a little bit more expensive. Drinks from people that live in San Diego went, go from like uh, $6 to $12. So, I mean, obviously people aren't making their money. Yeah. It's like Christmas time for these people. <laughs> they yeah. Pretty their, much. They make their entire amount of money in this one weekend. What about inside the convention for uh, for Wednesday? What do you guys <laughs> do for preview night? Well. Like actually once you guys got in. Well, getting through the line to get your badge has gotten, at least for me, progressively easier. That's not where you get hit with the line. Where you get hit with the line is you end up getting in line just to go into the exhibit hall since that's, I mean, there's two things that go on on preview night. They have one room that they sort of set aside just to show a bunch of new TV pilots and that kind of stuff. So there's a line for that, but then there's also a line to get into the exhibit hall, which you primarily want to do to run around and get your exclusives and all that since... Sort of like Omar already brought up the Giant Man Hero Click, and everybody has their exclusives they're trying to get, and it gets really, really insane trying to deal with. Okay, if I want to go to like, this is one thing about Comic Con that really kind of ticks me off a little bit. Places don't necessarily commit to the way they're doing things, so it's sort of like um, on preview night. I went by the Mattel booth. And oh, oh, they, are you telling that story? About the ticket? No, no, Paul, Paul Dini. Oh, well, I'll get to that. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> yes, but, um, I saw tweets. I need more. Yeah. But um, so went there, and basically they had already handed out, quote-unquote, passes or tickets to go ahead and basically when you could buy. And I actually got a pass for the next day between 10 and 12. So basically half hour after the convention hall opens, I can go there, turn in my ticket. By the next day... They stopped using the tickets. Huh. They just let people start lining up. So here I kind of strolled over there between 10 and 12, and it didn't even matter. I had a ticket anymore. I just had to get into the back of this line of people wanting to buy stuff. Um, I know Graffiti, another one that had the Green Lantern figures, started out the first couple of days doing raffles, and they had all these posted up signs. They never updated the signs or anything. All their signs said, go here at either 8 a.m. or 11 a.m., Go through the line. If you get a winning ticket, you can then go buy the Green Lantern figure. By Saturday, you just go up to where the line was, and they just give you the wristband, even if it was 9, 10, 10, 30. Or Green Lantern? Yeah. Well, I went on Thursday or Friday. I don't remember. The dude just handed me the ticket. It was really we funny. Friday and yeah. Saturday. Yeah, he was hilarious. Yeah. So he's like funky dude with crazy hair, yeah. and he was like, congratulations, you won. I was like, wait, what? And yeah. he was picking out the bad <laughs> tickets out. It was really funny. He had like a big pile of bad tickets. They were like, hey, congratulations, yeah. you won. So it's, it's definitely one of those things where they I can understand why they make adjustments, but it's still a little annoying when they've told you it's going to work one way and you sort of Especially with the Maddie thing where they hand you a thing saying, come back between this time and this time. And then ignore it. And then ignore it. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck or the Maddie. line is too fucking long because yeah. they already started the next line for the next hour. Oh, I yeah. hate Maddie. I mean, yeah, that's kind of ridiculous. And that's why I'm like, I'm going to stay with Infinite Earths, if anything. You know, that's what I'm going to do. Just I, because to invest a total of five to six hours, which I've done the last three years, to wait in line and then to go to another line and say, oh, no. From some security guy that, first of all, doesn't even have any connection to you know loyalty Mm -hmm. or is work it's just like this this company that just comes in and looks at the line oh 
that's the other thing that amused the crap out of me about the Maddie line. So the Maddie line wasn't that long because they had the little roped off thing. I mean, they they literally buy enough space on the floor that half of the space they actually buy for is just for line space. But then it also went to the wall and it went to this one break point in the wall where they had a security guard basically not allowing anybody to add to the line until it would get shorter. And the particular security guard pretty much said, just walk around the booth because you can't mill around. By the time I see you, maybe fifth or sixth time, I'll let you in. Huh. What? And that's so true. So there's a line of people making a line around the line to get into it's the like, line. They're yeah. just roving around. Yeah. There's yeah. a line and then yeah, there's, there's people. They, they call it they like call it the non they call it the non line. You walk yeah. around, you look at people who are kinda there too, you go, Is this the non line? And kinda yeah, this yeah. is the non line that doesn't exist. This is yeah. not the line that's actually Because here. as it stands, they have all sorts of things in place now saying you you can't stop here, you can't do this, you can't block this, you can't So the only way they can really handle that at this point is by having People just mill around, and so next year they should buy space for a mosh pit. Well, and the winner get whoever gets out gets like front of the line. So Omar, how was the um, how was the HeroClix line? It's fucking ridiculous. Same thing. I mean, and I know Jerome Gonyo, who's like the main PR marketing guy for uh, NECA slash WizKids, and you know, we've. He was just like, Omar, this is nuts. He's like, what they're doing every morning, and I found that this out, and I'm not supposed to be talking about this, but you're on the comics series, so you get all the inside shit, just like that, son. <laughs> if you come to Hero, if you come to Comic Con and you're lined up, supposedly like around three or four o'clock, some security will come over to you if you're at a specific place within, and I'm not going to say that space. I'm not going to say that place because I want to give it up for a lot of people that have been doing it for, for quite a few years. They will bring you in. I think it's upstairs and. Then you get the floor at 9 o'clock before anybody else. Or actually, 8.45, 8.30, depending on what you can do. Those are the people that get all the fucking prizes. Those are the ones that get all the fucking exclusives. Those are the ones that line up and create this madness where, you know what? It better If you really want something, go to fucking go to Evil Bay and just spend $50 more of double the amount of the price. Don't go with more than double. But that's if you really want that bad, get it. Because... F- that's how much someone was working hard to do it or a group of people. I know you have a lot of toy, toy head friends. I'm oh, sure yeah. a lot of them are the ones that do this stuff because they all, they, they got it down to a science. They all go to different places. They scoop up as, as much as they can and they get them for WizKids and NECA. I think they had a two day limit limitation and then it went to one day and then they were sold out. They were sold out by Wednesday. So obviously for them, it's a little different, you know, for, for Maddie collector, you know, they've been doing it for how many years yeah. and they, they do the exclusives and they even do the pre-exclusive, you know, where you can buy them online. So they have it, the system as bad as it is, it's still 10 times better than a lot of the smaller, smaller companies. Um, but now you're seeing the giant man, Ant-Man, uh, it was being sold around the floor actually for $160. It's being mm-hmm. sold on eBay for 150 to $200. People bought it there for 40 bucks. Yeah. Yeah. And I, 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 as much as I want to say that I don't like the idea of raffles or I don't like the idea of all of this stuff, as far as I'm kind of concerned when it comes to most things, when it comes to lines and that kind of stuff, I prefer having some way, just as sort of like for me as a person attending these cons and everything, I like knowing that if I put in a certain amount of effort, I'm going to get what I'm going yeah, for. Like for if you sure. wait, I mean, wait the raffle might work, but I, I do think it's like there's a guy that'll be waiting for like, you know, I don't know, 10 hours, 6 hours, mm. 5 hours, whatever yeah. it is, and goes and doesn't win the raffle. And the guy that just kind of walks up wins it, I, I always felt that was kind of unfair. But Yeah, I, I personally think there's – I always well, like the way they do it at like Black Friday at a lot of Best Buys and that kind of stuff where they come out at 3 o'clock in the morning or 2 o'clock in the morning, hand out the bands. tickets for the high – ticketed items and sure. pretty much say you're going to get this laptop you're going to get because you're here at 2 a.m or whatnot you're guaranteed your your item you're looking for now everybody else who wants to get there at six they may or may not get the items they're looking for but here's your guarantee no, to get what I mean, you're looking for this is just, this is just me throwing it out there but wouldn't it be kind of i mean we were in this technology age wouldn't it kind of be great to kind of have a central location where people can like yeah, I mean, you go to like fairs and stuff, and you see all of these like kiosks where it's like, "Let's enter to win this car contest," right? Why don't we use that technology to say, "Hey, I want to get in line for this figure if it's available at this time." Like you said, they started to do, 
Well, you, that's kind of what Hasbro out. does. They they pass out tickets with time. But time you're just spent tickets. You're, you're just basically exchanging standing in one line for standing in another line to get this raffle ticket thing. Yeah. I mean, it's all it's yeah. all the same. It, but if if you're in line to get a raffle ticket for multiple items at one time, then you're reducing the amount. All right, I'm going to stop this right now because well, this is not the fun stuff to talk no. about, the San Diego Comic Con. Because there's Toby, an excellent yeah. story that Charlie that, will Toby. tell about Maddie right now <laughs> that involves the motherfucking Paul Dini, okay. which is far more interesting than any of this line crap right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck this line I, shit. Well, I, I just want to say, because Toby, uh, Lane, you guys stood in line for some stuff, right? I mean, you guys were definitely, you guys were these guys, too. Did just I? real quick. I don't remember. You yeah, must we were in line for something. several things. What? Figures. I, I guess. Okay, what's I the, passed on Hasbro. Did you really? Fuck that line. <laughs> that Fuck bad. Did you get your line. helicarrier, bro? No. Oh, I didn't want that. Helicarrier looked how awesome. But yeah, but I how the hell am I going to take that home? Fuck that. I mean, I think the You've two things. You've done it before, bro. You've done it before. <laughs> Not that big. The two things stuff. There's two things to talk about in San Diego <laughs> are lines and celebrities. So let's finish the line conversation, then I want to hear the rest of it. Lane, what was the worst line you stood in? Was there a bad one? Getting in. <laughs> That's it? <laughs> the worst one. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, well, that works. What's this Paul Genie story? So after the con and I go again to update my Twitter, I see Paul Dini tweeted like a minute before I was updating that he went to Maddie and was told because he was a professional, he wasn't allowed to buy the Polly Pocket Harley Ivy Catwoman set. John, I have your Polly Pocket. Go ahead. <laughs> And I immediately tweeted him back. I'm like, dude, I have the thing to go pick up stuff tomorrow morning. If you want me to, I'll grab you a Polly Pocket because it's Paul Dini. Uh. And this is something I wonder. And this is just because this is something I always, always, always respected Warner Brothers slash DC for doing. I remember a long time ago um, finding out that pretty much everything Harley Quinn related that had been released they had just sent Paul Dini, like every statue, every figure, every like it's Harley Quinn. He just got it. Well, obviously, that's not happening here if he has to go to Maddie to try and get it. But I'm being turned away by Maddie. Turn yeah. away the creator of a property you're selling is just so that's wrong. It's fucking incredible. I love it. So Fuck you, wrong. Paul Dini. No, you can't buy it. <laughs> you, can't you need buy an attendee pass. It needs to be red. And you need to uh, create more creators that we can sell. <laughs> so? Yeah. So it, it, he had somebody else hook him up in the end, but it was like. Well, he said yeah. eBay, here we go. <laughs> yeah, yeah right? he, he, he specifically said he was just going to go to eBay, but I guess he had an uh, actual um, person he works with um, on his stuff that he does on the web with the rashi videos and that kind of stuff hooked him up but yeah yeah, it's just half my brain is having a sure brock moment right now keep going sorry but it's just what in some ways sort of spells out where i understand to a degree saying we don't want to allow like i understand not letting retailers buy the exclusives on preview night i understand that the pros i know a lot of pros who are huge fanboys of this stuff that um, well i i know yeah, about this it, firsthand just because four years ago i stood in line i don't know how early just to go into the mattel line for my stupid he-man figure just to be turned away yeah you know uh it was very heartbreaking then so it's good to know that they don't play favorites so that happens to paulini so i don't feel so bad anymore <laughs> but, <laughs> you know but, <laughs> but, i guess to go back though what you're saying about the retailers the retailers do get to do what they need to do because they all know a lot of the people that are there overseeing yeah. the booths that are really the the retail support the marketing guys the cross the yeah. the, the march the, the channel marketing guys because if you go over to the dead the dead space where all of the comic book stores and the shops and everything the little sp- places that team up together to mm-hmm. afford to have like a hundred square foot space you get everything you want there but you do have to pay a markup value but that's there's I will say this just because it I've always said that if you go to a convention, you pay the money on the hotel, you pay the money for the con, you you pay a shit ton of money to go to this thing, you should not be turned away, especially if you're there on Wednesday, Thursday, even Well, they're really just Friday. punishing the professionals. Because the retailers, I kind of understand why they're turning them away. But, but the that's thing the, is... They're not turning the retailers away. That's, that's what we're saying. That's no, the they thing. are. Mattel is. Mattel is. They are supposedly turning them away. All right, but, well. I mean, I hate to say it, but a lot of these retailers have people who are there who buy attendee badges yeah, yeah, yeah. but then have their retailer yeah, yeah. badges no, and just all the time. it 
no matter what they put in place, there's always going to be people who circumvent it yeah. regardless of how. And in a lot of cases, some of this stuff gets sold before they even let people in. Yeah. Before there's even a line. and well, what But are... I personally would... They spend so much time basically saying, we're not going to let people get into the con without badges. We're not going to let people resell their badges. We're not going to let people do this, do that. I kind of wish they just sort of say, we're not going to let you resell con merchandise at the con. That would actually be fucking cool. Yeah. 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 Because I... I can't stand seeing the same thing in another booth for twice the uh, yeah. three times the value. Yeah, the fact that you pay the money to get here, you can't get it. And I mean, how many of these figures do you see at various retailer booths who have a surplus of them? I saw seven Hill carriers in one of those small little shops, and yeah. I know they were sold for like a hundred something bucks or whatever. And it was they were selling that shit for three fifty. Yeah. And then to have a conversation with them, oh no, I, I saw, I listened, and I sat back. And I just like watched the guy talk and he had to, the, the, I felt so bad because the dad was buying it for the kid. Like the kid was like, re, you know, walking and looking at other stuff. He told him to, you know, mm-hmm. and he was like negotiating with him pretty much. He went up like 20% of that mm. price uh, just so he can walk away with that hello carry. I was like, that's some dirty ass shit. Yeah. And that was a lot of dirty I mean, stuff going on, on there for sure. On Saturday, Hasbro finally got to the point where you could not even have to do the ticket. Just go up there. They still had hello carriers, but yeah. it's like... That's if you're still there by Saturday and things finally calm down and you see what exclusives were so, uh, such in high demand, which you'll love this. The My Little Pony figure sold out to the point where you couldn't get it at that point. But Son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God. Lane, you hooked me up? No derpy. Damn. Yeah. I knew you were a brony. <laughs> Fucking undercover brony. We tried. Are you pointing, <laughs> right. are you okay. pointing I, me? I, so I was in the Hasbro line before you were. So I got a question, to Charlie, and for you guys who went... What's I mean? How big of a difference is it from Wednesday, Thursday night to Saturday? Uh, it's all the Sunday. same. No, actually, Saturday was dying down for the first time it in many years. Depends on what you're there for, because it continues to explode if you're there to say get someone so's autograph or. But in terms of the exclusive hunting, it slows way down yeah, by Saturday, Sunday, days. and pretty much they've already blown, blown through the stuff that's going to sell out rather quickly by then and it's just down to the other exclusives and well i remember last year i went to the hasbro uh booth on sunday and it was like it was like someone had torn that place apart there was like three loose figures in this one case there was it's, like, like, it's like if walmart, walmart has yeah, it's an like 80 percent arm off yeah walmart has an 80 percent off sale yeah. or something it's, that's how it looks i think like you can still there. get duke nukem at target for seven bucks yeah it was it was torn apart <laughs> Well, let me, let me, let me actually, get back to the badges real fast, though. So I kind of understand, the. I mean, whether they're officially doing it or not. I mean, what Mattel is saying, pros and exhibitors are the same. And I want to state that they're not. Pros go in the same time that regular attendees do. They have to wait outside in the same lines that everybody else does do. Yes, the pros do not pay for their badges, you know. And that's what Mattel is saying, that people that pay for their badges should get priority. I, I have a question. Yeah. I get a, I get a comp retailer badge. But I'm not an exhibitor. I'm not a pro. What's it, what? What does a uh, what, what does it say? Anything on the badge? What did it say last year? I think it, it says retailer on yeah. the does badge. It? So yeah, I think you included in that. Hmm. Okay. I I, yeah. I have no clue if they. Which you know, I mean, here, here's the thing: exhibitors are in there early, so I can't understand. Like you know, Adam Hughes done it many times where he does. Until the con opens, nobody's allowed in line. If you're in yeah. line, we're gonna turn you away and we're gonna remember you, which yeah. is very cool of Adam Hughes to do. Yeah. You know, so you know that all these people go to these toy shops is really uncool. But you know, since Maddie, I mean, I can't understand Maddie doing this, but the pros, they have their deadlines to work twelve, fifteen hours a day yeah. just to go buy their stupid toy and then get turned away. Yeah. I almost think that's a slap in the professional's face. Which yeah. is why I kind of feel if they just made a no selling. The, I understand selling last year's con figures at the various booths, but this year's con, I wish they would just institute that policy because then Maddie wouldn't have to. Well, I, I'm worried that they just sell it on the websites. It's just, it's and again, I don't, I don't care if they do that. Yeah, it's, but there's, it's, there's, there's a flat out I call professional flipper. Like I've many well, times seen them like get making mountains full of like toys, and they're just like this and team of like they're, five, they're ten always going to have that at the cons and you can't really prevent that yeah. and i'm not even saying to a degree that they need to worry so much about them because that's that's all about managing marking the badge or making it so and i mean they've done this for years at I different they places should, they, they stamp the or 
Um, one of my favorite ones is they used to have different types of hole punchers. Yeah. So like they just hole puncher. There's a ton of those. Um, so they just do sort of like this kind of hole punch if you bought here, this type yeah. of – and that worked rather well. But it, it's just flippers being limited. Actually, that goes into my other point about exclusives. I kind of wish the limit would increase with the amount of time the con goes on versus starting with a limit – you can buy six per person per time you go through the line. I mean, there were Mattel didn't mark your badge at all. I mean, you go through the line, you buy your six, 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 six or whatever, go through the line, buy your six, six, six. If you're trying to flip and that's not really what that's intended for. It's supposed to be limit six A person. period for, for that person. But even beyond that, I kind of feel like if you're doing a limit six on Wednesday night preview night, and it causes you to sell out of everything you have on preview night or even potentially everything you have at the con for other ones, maybe you shouldn't have started at limit six. Uh-huh. Start at limit one, two, mm-hmm. and, and then work your way up every day. Well, here, here, and that way you can figure the out the demand though. and how to get it to as many people as possible. What matters most to these people is selling out. Well, so yeah. in the end, the end goal is to sell out, not necessarily make it fair, even though that's kind of what we wish they were doing. Well, well the, but the, the limits would make it fair initially if it's also if you they, can't sell, it's not all, like yes, you can't sell con, yeah. con you can't sell con merchandise at the, at con. the con. You started to limit one or two, but y- but you know Toby Toby hit the nail on the head. They don't give a fuck. They don't care. They sell out. They sell. That's all they can. Yeah. They, they want to sell. Here's, every- here's the thing. They get in trouble if they don't sell out. How right. do they explain to the bosses? Oh, we made this many, but you only sold that many. No, right. there's no C2E2. They can just re-put the sticker <laughs> and do the label, just like graffiti de- designs did <laughs> yeah. the last two years. <laughs> well, so. let's uh, let, let's let's move on from this from this. I like graffiti does that. It does do that. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, Kyle Kilowog is going to yeah, show right, up. Exactly. At C2. Definitely will. The two the two other big things at Comic Con, uh, panel celebrities, and then we'll wrap up with parties. But let's start with panels and celebrities before Omar and Toby get on their their hangover kick. So, well, there's not a lot of Omar Toby stories together. I know that was fucking incredible. That that we tried to connect we, so many days. We did. We, but we tried like every night. As it is, not even every night. Even during the so daytime. Bad. Yeah, during, during the day, the I apologize. I'm a fairly no, busy guy during well, the day. We're, I think everyone's busy. Everyone has different tastes and interests. For me, yeah. Yeah. it's like you know, obviously comics first, second. Yeah. Cosplay for me, it's Third. sex first. Toys, and we go. You Toys know. and creators. <laughs> creators comes last. Celebrities, very, 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 very down low on the list, and because of that, I get some play well, from them, and well, it's all good. Well, when I say that. celebrities, I mean comic people, movie people, you know, whatever it is. So, so panels. Let's uh, Charlie. Charlie saw the the celebrity of the moment, Joss Whedon. Oh, besides. <laughs> <laughs> we're going straight into this. Like, it's right, right, right after, like, uh, Ryan goes, like, we're going this, this, and this, and that's all release. Boom. You start the story right off at church. Well, before, bef- okay, Firefly panel. Let's just hear it. How many, how many people, how many people raised their hand were there at the Firefly panel? Fuck yeah. Oh, four. Fuck yeah. Lane was not? No. Fuck. No Omar? No. But Toby and Charlie. Fuck yeah! Yes. All right, don't, so, let's, let's 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 make it quick. Firefly, just 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 hit me with it. Hit me with the best parts. We got a lot. Of, we got a lot of panels and and, and party stuff to talk okay, about. So this I'm just going to fill this up with Firefly talk now, just because he said that. <laughs> this podcast can't go on forever. We're we're clocking Firefly close to an hour so already. I'm, let's, let's okay, I'm waiting. <laughs> so to give you guys a little bit of information about my plan the night I went to go camp out for Firefly. Yeah, Higgins almost just broke his neck. By the, the way, guys, the story is <laughs> awesome. The, the story like, starts there. I was like, let's wrap this up. Yeah. So the night before, <laughs> so but that's where the story really starts, though. So I I kind of coined this last year with the if I'm going to go out and hang out with friends, I'm just going to crash in whatever line I care about for the next morning. And last year was Doctor Who. Yes, last year was Doctor Who. This year it was going to be Firefly. So I get on a bus, which was fucked up in and all of itself. Yes. It sounds like hanging yeah. That's why I walked 45 minutes to come see you, because the fucking bus was a mess. So they have these shuttles that run you, from the hotels Better. to the con, and I got my wife Brought and my kids to the hotel. So I went to go get on the shuttle. First shuttle stops, says I'm not picking anybody up, I'm going out, out of service. Wait for the next one. <laughs> next shuttle comes up, tells us, I'm just dropping people off, I'm going out of service, wait for the next one. Third one comes up, says, I'm not picking anybody up, I'm going, and I yelled. <laughs> I yelled to the point where the bus driver felt guilty and let us on. 
Nice. <laughs> Charles, nice. Have no, you seen this no, man? No, this, if this man is yelling Char- at you, you do what Charlie he says. Charlie can get very, very scary. I have to be honest. I've seen Charlie in action, and he's rather scary. Scary. Yes, man. I've seen Charlie at a at a uh, Hero Clicks night, and he did not did not oh, like a ruling. He did I, not I, like I, a, I've heard the legend of that <laughs> yes, story. He did not like a ruling, and the person he was playing against <laughs> is, is like is nicest the, guy. Uh, <laughs> is this the origin of evil evil Charlie? Evil, evil Charlie. Charlie. <laughs> He's still here. <laughs> he had a taste. And he liked it. <laughs> well, you, so you got in line. So you got in line for Firefly. So I get to the con and I call Toby fully plan to go hang out with Toby and Omar for the night, and then just go crash in the line. But then I saw how long the line already was, and this was at 8.30 in the evening. For the panel that started at... Well, Firefly didn't start till 1. It was Community and okay. um, Legend of Korra before Fuck that. Yeah! So, But this is the whole hall. Like You go in and you for, camp there. For Ballroom night. 20. Right. Is that the one? Okay, that was the same one that did Community last year because I got No, in. that was over in Indigo Ballroom oh, last year. Oh, y- you're right. Okay, 20 is the bigger 20 one. Ballroom 20 is the bigger one right. that holds like 4,000 or 4,500 okay. people, something right. like that. And the line was already far enough back and growing quickly. So I just went, yeah, I'm just going to sit here. And uh, to my credit, by the time I got in, I was only f- six rows back or something, so you could see people clearly you nice. would be able to see the screens clearly it was actually a really nice while spot. charlie was doing that i was up on the roof parting my butt <laughs> off and omo was doing that too just not at the same time yeah we were both there <laughs> yeah we were both there but you were there for the fucking better part you fucking yeah. got to see fucking Riza and fucking yeah, jermaine dupree yeah, dude, yeah. It was, it was... so toby didn't know i was in line at this point <laughs> so i'm just sort of chilling hanging out with people who are actually there for legend of Korra and yeah. not firefly <laughs> <laughs> there there were a couple of those there and I was happening to sit next to most of them. Um and I was just talking to them and it was this really nice lady from New Zealand who owned a bookstore there so we were sort of talking about the difference between comic shops and bookstores in the US versus in New Zealand and she had a friend from Australia and all that and I'm just sitting there sitting there and then Adam Baldwin walks by I'm like hey look it's Adam Baldwin. <laughs> Nice. Well, after um, that, you saw someone else. And then I'm sitting there again, and Toby walks by taking <laughs> video of the line. <laughs> In the middle of the night, I'm like stumbling through, trying to video the fucking line. And also, there's a dude like, Toby, I'm like, what the fuck? Oh, it's Charlie. <laughs> so, just to interject here, Toby and I were at the IGN Capcom slash Resident Evil 6 premiere slash Expendables 2 party. They were both right next to each other. Yeah. And all the talent was there and everybody was all there. All the and talent. It was fucking bananas because these bananas were hard as fuck. Me. Like, did you have those slushies? Dude, yeah, I, I was slushies knocked out. Good. They were so good, they broke the machine. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. After a while, there was no more they slushies. They give you this slushy of this drink that's like this big. You don't even know like, what's in this. You start here. the party story, I end that party story. Because you were in there in the beginning of that part. I was there in the end. Yes. So I'm seriously thinking we should stop now, do our outro, and then just record for YouTube for the rest of the night. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know. Well, let's hear, let's hear the rest of Charlie's story. Charlie's story. Charlie's story. Charlie's story. Charlie's story. Okay. So that was at about 1230 that you walked by, I think it was. Yeah. And I finally go, you know what? I should actually get some sleep in line here. So I lie down. Hour and a half later. I get a text from Charlie. Everybody's sort of wakes up and startled because Joss Whedon has come down and just starts greeting everybody in line, shaking hands, taking pictures, signing stuff, and slowly makes his way down the line. I think the favorite quote I heard him say is, this is great if you're a fan of zombie apocalypses because it i could see why he'd say that considering he was surrounded by all these people clawing at him basically. (laughs) Half asleep. (laughs) This is a dream. Oh. Well, that that was funny at the plan. That was some of the best part actually because he had his pen and everything for signing and a can of red bull in the other hand <laughs> 2 30 in the morning you need it yeah yeah, yeah. well and, like and he next... was he was literally like stumbling forward <laughs> well and at the panel is pretty funny he goes i'm a little tired some of you guys might know why yes. <laughs> and he goes well how many knew it was uh reality and not just a dream <laughs> nice 
Nice. Yeah. So so let's hear about this. Uh, you got well. For, I guess first parties or panels. Did you guys go to any paneling? Omar, well, I don't. You didn't really go to much to panel. Huh? Firefly thing. He think that just me. He saw just me. What else do you need to know? At two thirty in the morning. Yeah, right. and then he went to a firefly panel, panel and nothing happened. So that's fine. We, no, everybody cried at the fucking paneling. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> bunch of babies. Yeah, fucking tears coming down. Everybody's crying. I was like, what the man, fuck is going we, on? Ryan, we're not going to be able to protect you from the brown coats, man. Yeah. <laughs> just. <laughs> just Oh my! Okay. You're on your own. Going back to Nerd HQ, yeah. our conversation earlier about that being the place to be. When it comes to panels that are more intimate and actually you can interact with the the people, and they don't feel like totally staved off because this is so far. This is like maybe seven blocks away. It was like Sixth mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. J. It was like so far off from the from Comic Con. You didn't feel like totally harassed. You didn't feel, and that's like just genius that they did that. Um, I looked at panels from from a few years past, and I just. D- wasn't really into it. Maybe it's just something where. Also, the last few years, I was all about hitting the shit, hitting hitting the shit out of the show, yeah, yeah. being back to back to back, or at least trying. Like how a lot of us try to do every year, because only once one time a year we get to get everything in one place. Well, um, I guess what? just to preface the whole panel thing, to get into any panel at the con requires hours of commitment in terms of getting in line and friends. Just get Good into friends. The, get into the room. So most people at this point who like if you're going to get into ballroom 20 you're committed for a good chunk of the day in ballroom 20 you're not going to deal with a line for one panel unless it's something really special like for the sure. firefly sure. reunion no, you have quite a few people but like most people who go into hall h camp out go into hall h then until they out. close <laughs> same with ballroom 20 at this point most people who go into ballroom 20 are there for the majority of the day. They may stay through the True Blood panel and then leave and miss the last two. But for the most part, if you're trying to get into, say, a Game of Thrones panel, you better get into it the panel before or the panel before that even if yeah. you want a guaranteed spot. Well, like when we went to the community panel, that's even you're right the other one. And that's not even as big as those two. And still, when I went there, there were people like, oh, I'm here for the like fifth panel. And so I got yeah. there four or five hours before they opened the room. I was there probably, what, 4 or 5 a.m. maybe? And it was like, still, I was not the first 500 people in line. Like, no. It was so long. So when Omar says he wasn't interested in panels, what that really translates to is he doesn't want to commit the amount of time to make it into even comic panels. It's not just the celebrity panels that are like this. It's... It's crazy trying to three do... Three to six hours, probably, right? Is yeah. what you got to invest. In. Yeah. Well, Toby, how about you? Did you do any panels besides Firefly? <clears throat> well, my priority was Korra, the one right before <laughs> Firefly, so that was awesome. And they renewed it. They're going to have four seasons now, and that before Brock goes into the cartoon conspiracy <laughs> end, I'll just end it right there. I just <sighs> want to say Korra is freaking Toby. awesome. The girl that plays Asami is freaking hot in real life. She's a cutie. I saw. Oh I saw my of her. god! Yeah. I was floored. But anyways, that's as far as it go with Core. Core is the best. I went to every fucking panel. Yeah, yeah, but you had the internet. I internets. was on the internet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And good um, lord, there was a lot of panels. Yes, yes. There I was. did. I did two panels that I feel very, very, very bad for. That my fellow mate here, Charlie, couldn't make it to. Uh, he got us tickets for Nerdjet Q for Doctor Who, and Charlie couldn't get parking, so I felt really bad. I should have switched uh, spots with him. Which was beyond awesome. I got to see Matt Smith, Karen Jillian, and Arthur perform the Bohemian Rhapsody <laughs> live. And nice. it's something to be seen. <laughs> well, they I went all out. <laughs> I get a random tweet from Omar like in the middle of the afternoon that's like, dude. And he takes this picture and I'm like, I have no idea who the hell I'm looking yeah, at. Who like, are those people? No, that was everybody that he's yeah, fucking talking yeah. about. The whole cast uh, of fucking uh, of your Doctor, Doctor who. who shit. What was so funny was when I was looking at him, I'm shit, like, man. I'm like I, I didn't know who I was supposed to be looking at. And I'm like, ah, I don't it know. It was who these, all those four people. I know. Uh, like, yeah, yeah. It didn't click. And then someone's like, isn't that... Matt Smith from Doctor Who, and I'm like, and then it boom, it clicks in my head, and I'm like, holy shit, you're right. I'm like, hey, you were sitting <laughs> yeah. like right next there to them. There are two tables away from me. That's and awesome. Like just jumping back and forth since you know, yeah, yeah. pass me the oh, mic. Yeah. yeah, the spot to be throughout all of Comic Con for most people that are in like celebrities and partying for free and all that kind of shit. Omni 
killed it. Oh yeah, supposedly no, they did. the majority they of did. the fucking they had a they had, they had like this A list and B list. Andy Serkis and was over there. Uh, they had Alec all Baldwin people yep. from HBO. <laughs> yep. They were all yep. there. They stayed, but then they set it up with uh fucking with Wired and with a bunch of other big companies that were able to invest and and spend because they invested so much money per day. Like um, I think it was Wired, Swiss Army, um, Spec, and I talked with uh, some of the Army. executives how much it costs per day for them to run that shit. I mean, we're talking about fucking like, like almost a million, like yeah. per day, like just having a party and a spot where everyone goes to. You had, I, I, I got to meet two people from Game of Thrones. There was the whole, pretty much the whole cast was there. Um, you know, your, your Doctor Who peoples were there. Um, yeah, well, we ran into uh, Nikita people, not Nikita, but the other ones. Yeah, the 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 girl and Burkoff. The Sorry. best music. Sorry, I don't know your names right now. <laughs> and we're in San Diego, and every, everything's a terrace party, right? Um, obviously, uh, what, Hard Rock, Hard Rock. Hard Rock. Um, yep. They had yep. a shitload of Machinima. They had the uh, what is it, the EW party? Um, I think we talked about this a little bit earlier about how parties aren't that hard to get to get into. I think there was maybe four parties, unless you're fucking you really know people that are working the front desk. You can't get in, but for the most part, all the other parties are pretty decent. Like even if you, whether you're on the list or not, uh, everyone is pretty open, you know. And I think the comment that was made by someone around here, I think it was one, of, it was you or mm. you, I forget. But uh, you know, it is becoming a lot more Hollywood. Well, well so. it was harder to get into the party when I was trying to get into the party. It was the wrong party to get into. <laughs> <laughs> you well, were because you were in the Expendables line. Yeah, right? I was like, I my a- name is on the fucking list. <laughs> No, it's like, yes, it is. Look again. I'm getting and, then, and then I go time. talk to a security guard. I go, no, there's another door right around the corner. Oh, sorry. Yeah, but then, <laughs> I'll go in and I'll like, oh, yeah, you had no problem. Go up there. So this is the party that was a badass party. It was like, was it Friday night or Thursday? <laughs> it was a uh, shit. It's, it's Thursday. Days. Yeah, so, but again, it was Capcom IGN slash Expendables 2 on the other line. You could open uh, open up a canvas of like the VIP little section, <laughs> and you, you see Sylvester Stallone and fucking all those other old guys, uh, Bruce Willis, and all those other guys like that are there. People kept doing it, just, and then it was just a funny thing. Hi, they're like all like you know, the party that the other side though that we were on that was better. Right? That was better because the talent that was there. They had yes. fucking zombies, zombie, yes. zombie hooker yes. um, dancers yes. that were pole dancing. Uh, uh, what is it called? Resident Evil. Yes. Yeah, yes. yeah, but they, it's, uh, what's it called, those dancers? The, go-go dancers. Uh, go-go dancers. Zombie go-go dancers. Yes. I mean hooker. I, I have much respect for go dancers. They're yes. incredible. Was the I, pole I used to be a dancer back in the day. There was no pole. They just no, knew how but, to dance. No, but, and, and they were like coming around and they were like creating the party. You know, they were dancing yeah, with yeah, you yeah, and they were zombies, but they looked hot. I just yeah. want to get bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah no. being, being, so, a, being a bouncer for eight years, all this stuff is like, okay. Wait, I don't know. Well, I'm like, well, here's here's the thing, though. See, I got finally got in. This guy was no longer around. Yeah, but I, went to, I went to the Ubisoft party. Yeah, and that's that's when uh, Jermaine Dupri and the RZA from the Wu Tang Clan started going on stage and start partying it up. Now, I know you, this is not a music panel, but the cool part was so it's it's, it's set up where it's on top of a roof and the hotels. There's still hotel walls mm-hmm. that go further up. People started watching us, and it's really funny because they started posting notes onto the window. There's one that goes, please go to bed. There's another one, please invite me to the party. And, you know, it gets better. There started One started doing a little light show in his room. He uh, closed his lights and started doing a light show. The best one is, though, there's a motherfucking Batman started dancing. All he saw was a fucking silhouette out of a window, and some motherfucking Batman, he's totally grooming to the party. I got you beat. Nice. Ah? I got you beat. All this right. isn't from a Bring party. This is during the daytime. All right. During so the party. A lot of us went to the oh, daytime. Deal. Yeah. Lane, you went to the oh, yeah. Thank you for the, yeah. it. Thank you for those pictures. Those were fucking awesome. awesome, right? Yeah. yeah. So, um... It was right outside of the Hilton, yeah. in between um, where all the crazy people sleep yeah. overnight, like you. <laughs> and then, so I, it has like all, they had like all the Batmobiles through the years. Yes, yes. And, uh, you know, there's tons of cosplayers out there, and the majority of them were all Batman, Joker, mm-hmm. all those kind of people. You met fucking Christian Bale, didn't you? He was one of the Batmans. No. Oh, okay. No, no. This is even better. There was a cosplay battle. One of the Jokers, who one it was my favorite Joker. He was dressed up as like the art. Oh uh, no no no, the DCUO um, Joker, the one the with the big with old the cannon. Bazooka? Yes, you saw him. I've seen him at m- multiple cons now. He's awesome. that guy talks is so much shit, right? And he's also there with uh, Harley dressed yes. up, just like and a few others. He's like yeah. a big organizer. Motherfucker got in a fight. 
like, and I think uh, I have a picture a here. Physical fight? He got a physical fight Ooh. with another Batman. <laughs> <laughs> so bad for fucking Batman. <laughs> Batman. This Batman was like in the, the straight get up armor ah! like Dark Knight. <laughs> it's like a Batman imposter. Ah! You cannot, you do not want to be Batman and get in a fight with someone with free flowing suit and you're in <laughs> armor when you can't even move your head. This is daylight, daytime, and I was like, no, 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 it wasn't daylight. It was like probably like 5.30 because this is, this was, no, this was Saturday. Yeah. This it, was Saturday because that's the day where Omar, I dressed up. It's what? summertime. It's daytime to like nine at fucking night. <laughs> not in San Diego. Yeah, but it's all kind of like a blur anyways i saw that shit and i had no energy for anything and i was like fuck i'm just gonna jump in a cab to to wait in a cab yeah what? five f- going away like only f- like what five blocks away instead of walking five blocks away i waited like 40 40 minutes to just yeah. go in a car because obviously yeah, that's a wrong lines. yeah, yeah that's you had wrong. lines yeah <laughs> but i was just like holy shit that was so epic like that's awesome. batman and joker fighting yeah. Th- that's better than my dancing batman on the roof that's great no, that's a great story yeah. though yeah, yeah. Was, i have video Lane, pa- panels. What panels uh, did you do? I gave up on most of the lines. Oh, I did only you really? Went to one panel, which was the the Jim Lee panel, where he, the one we talked about drawing uh, and stuff. Yeah, we talked about drawing, yeah. and then nice. they, they raffled off a bunch of drawings. The cool. End. It's pretty. He cool. has a nice. lot of kids. Do you know he was? Did you know that Jim? Ah, uh, let's actually, not talk about that. <laughs> anyways, did you know that Jim Lee was drawing almost every day in the DC booth? Yes. Yeah. 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 He was. He, yeah, he mentioned that. He's, he's fucking awesome. Always that guy really works active. so no, hard. No, he does. I he does. It. People don't give him enough credit. I love it. Well, I liked. I mean, I read the the article on on his panel, and I liked how his mom actually waits in line to get stuff signed from him. <laughs> right? And he's like, "Mom, you can get stuff signed anytime." She's like, "No, I'll wait." She wants the experience. So I um I went to the Street Fighter panel, which was freaking awesome because I I I seen some video on it, but some of the producers and some of the creators they dress up. Uh-huh. So like one of the uh, you know high executive producers dresses up as Blanca, yeah. and they, this is the way they're introduced, and they start paneling the nor- normal, and all of a sudden you hear this crazy Japanese person in the back, no fighting, right? And out comes a crazy looking Blanca dude, yeah. and they go, <laughs> oh, it's the president, of blah 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 blah, right? So it's freaking hilarious. He starts going off by Street Fighter, and he goes, oh, should we announce a new thing? And they're like, everybody go, yeah, and they goes, how about Street Fighter Five? They go, everyone goes, yeah. He goes, well, maybe next year. <laughs> and then it keeps going on. And they had a, like a little, uh, what's it called? A, 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 a little game thing where you ask questions. Uh, what is it called? Well, it, it, Q&A, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like like, no, no, not Q&A. It's like a, you know, um, to get win prizes and stuff. So okay. all of a sudden there was like a Tekken question. And people were like, what? And then that fucking Tekken guy goes, oh, my God. He's dressed up too as like one of the Tekken characters. It was pretty funny. And they start trash talking each other the whole time. That's so, funny. Yeah, I have to say that was pretty darn good. Yeah. Oh, I do got a panel story. Oh yeah. Oh, the RZA, the, the RZA, uh, the nerd for those HQ, you, the other nerd yes, HQ one. from, from Wu Tang Clan. Yeah. Uh, you know, producer, um, music director. He's done things for uh, you know for Ghost Dog for most of a lot of Quentin Tarantino films. He's probably yes. that really put him on the map. I think with yes. the mainstream audience. Well, he has a movie coming out. Yes, he does. The Man with the Iron Fist, and yes. he was there with Lucy Liu Lucy and. Liu. Uh, Danny Bautista is like I guess he's a yep. big wrestler guy Mexican dude super cool guy I bumped him three times and at a few parties and he's super cool just talks with you and just like whatever he's super mellow his people were actually more like hey watch out man he might do something I'm like seriously he's surrounded by fucking dude. he's surrounded by women do you really think he wants to touch another dude <laughs> no I don't think so anyways no I ran into Merce Really? Yeah, he oh, was on the shit. convention booth. He was he was uh, he wrote a comic like a fat graphic novel. He's trying to sell. Nice, that's yeah. dope. Yeah. Um, okay. Anyways, with Riza, so he this is his first time doing a movie. So he and he got like you know Quentin Tarantino. T- Quentin Tarantino gave him like full on like you own this shit. It's all you. And he owned it. Like he was like in the panel, pretty much telling the whole script. I was like, <laughs> wow. He's like, I don't want to do it. He started off. He's all yo 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 yo. He's from the East Coast. Yo yo yo. Yeah, you know. What's up, sons? Hey, gods and the earths. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to spoil it. Did he put the whole script in rhyme form? No. But uh, he, there, was, <laughs> no, no there was some shit where he answered a question and he rhymed. And then Lucy Liu, like, you know, obviously biggest star everyone knows who she is. She, like, fucking said, like, three things. And, everyone, like, I was talking with Trey, who's one of my homies, and we were, yeah. you know, obviously, we're both for comics and the comic both, right? And he's like, that was fucking incredible. Because, like, she said, like, a few bits and pieces, but she had nothing to say. all Rizza. Like, because he just owned it, and he, like, he, 
he was like a fanboy's dream pretty uh, much because he gave you everything that you'd want to hear yeah. answered every fucking question oh so what's the next movie oh yeah so you know we're talking about dream work get, get some shit lined up it's not <laughs> all pinned out yet like you know, but you know <laughs> but for the most part you know a lot of people probably didn't even get what he was saying and wouldn't probably put it to he writing. was just saying stuff yeah yeah it was a dream Riza. thank you alright that's well, cool well what about signings did you guys go to any autographs any signings comic lines anything no, more more lines yeah, it's the same one Charlie got. I got uh, the Joss Whedon signing. Nice. Well, but and, there was uh, at, that was at the panel. That was at the in line in for line, the panel, though, right? In yeah. line for the panel was when he came out, and I I didn't bother getting anything signed. Yeah, just not. You were too stunned. Just admit it. You were like, oh, okay, I'm always oh. stunned. Did you get the picture? I got. I got not quite a few pictures. Him, though. Oh, you didn't get a picture with Joss Whedon? No, I didn't. Uh, See? That's what happens when you're in line by yourself and there's a bunch of random people. But you talked to that New Zealand lady. You should have just yeah, handed why her the camera. the camera. She, she was there for Avatar, the so yeah. she was still in line. You think she's going to run away with your camera? Ooh, I got a fucking camera. I'm out of this line. <laughs> no, but um, it just, yeah. I got the Joss Whedon hero clicks. <laughs> <laughs> he's, missed, he's Mystic's 240 points. Yeah. I heard the Stan Lee one was pretty dang good. Stan Lee one's nuts. Yeah. 66 points. He can turn into any character because he's the creator. Yeah. <laughs> he can write you off his script and just make you go off the map. It's really? Awesome. Can I have that one? No. Oh. <laughs> I'll play you if I can have that one. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, I guess I guess uh, if, if no if no autographs or signing stuff, what... Uh... I do have one more story I want to yeah. tell. Yeah, go ahead. So I, I was given the wrong information when I went to the actual Maddie Maddie. Because there's Maddie booth for buying stuff, and then there's actually the Maddie booth for showing off stuff and raffles and that kind of stuff. And I was there looking at all the DC stuff, and the, she's like, do you like DC figures? And she gave me a thing because they were going to be doing a signing. She told me they were going to be doing a signing for the DC robot chicken later at 1. Well, like everything, I show up there half hour early, find out, 1, it's not a signing. 2, I have the wrong color ticket. I was just given entirely the wrong information. But while I was waiting there, Jeff Johns bumps into my wife and then goes up there and my wife's just looking at me like, did I just get bumped into by Jeff Johns? I'm like, yes, yes, you did. I'm so <laughs> jealous of you. I wish fucking Lori would know yeah. who Jeff Johns is well, that, and care. I just think it's funny that Charlie's so proud that, you know, Jeff Johns bumped into his wife. <laughs> it just well, amused me. I was curious. Did your kids want to do the Iron Man costume contest? No, uh, I hear, heard about that. That's awesome. I, I actually, it's one of those things where I was actually at the booth as they were setting up, like talking to people like, so we're going to bring up your kids this way. And then I moved on because I had other stuff to do. And then, of course, I see the video when I get back. I'm like. Okay, so if I just stuck around a little bit longer, that would have been fun. Yeah, I, I think that's actually really cool that more and more of these surprise celebrity signings are happening. For those that don't know, uh, Robert Downey Jr. showed up for the kids uh, Iron Man like costume mm-hmm. contest yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah. So. And for those who don't know, Ashley worked for Robert Downey before nice. and Tobey Maguire oh. on the same movie. Excellent. But, I mean, that's part of what Comic-Con is to me at this point is, yes, when you're trying to see these people at guaranteed places, really hard to do. Right. But that's where sort of the parties come in. If you just wander the showroom floor, a lot of these celebrities go down. Like, yes, they'll have their little security guards escort them around. Or they wear a mask. Yeah. Some people just go down in costume and yeah. will go shopping. And- like uh, the guy from Hawaii Five O was it two years ago? And mm-hmm. he walked around with one of the V for Vendetta masks. <laughs> yeah. So he just went shopping. And I hear Quentin Tarantino likes to go shop yeah. a lot too. Yeah, I mean, I mean, last year every celebrity I saw within ten feet of me was wandering the floor, or like in the yeah. hotel, or like not at, actually in the yeah. convention. Yeah. And they're all, for the most part, really friendly outside the continent. Now, mind you, there's always that fine line between. Saying, Crazy hey, person. love your stuff. Can I get a quick photo or something? And most of them, it really depends on the situation. Some of them will be pretty much like, you want a signature? Well, go get in line with all these other people because yeah. they're not trying to start a impromptu line. Yeah. 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 But if you can make it quick and just stuff, they're more than happy to be friendly and nice to you. And well, well everyone that I've seen uh, when I went when we went last year, it was that it was kind of like that like that eye contact and like, hey. Yeah. You're a guy, and they kind of give you the nod, and, and yeah. you go about your business. It's like, I'm not going to harass these guys when yeah. they wander and around. I love that. Yeah. I, I yeah. absolutely love that. I, and I especially love seeing them wander around looking at stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I mean, what, you see this at, at a lot of Comic Cons. 
yeah. uh, not Comic Con, but comic book conventions. Where I mean, you definitely see a lot of the comic guys out there on the floor looking yeah. around. Um, but you basically, I mean, everyone, every story I've ever heard, and then go on last year. I mean, I see myself where it's like, oh, these like Hollywood guys walking around and TV guys walking around, and like. You know, the heads of the companies walking around the floor show. It's not just, you know, the writers and artists yeah. and, and side guys. So, yeah, it's super cool. Yep. I speaking, guess. Speaking of Maddie, did you guys hear about the new uh, the new Infinite Earths pieces? I did. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yes. Actually, there were a few changes to their subscription plan this year that I thought was very interesting. What, what happened? Well, if you buy a subscription, you're now going to get first dibs on everything – because you know how they do the subscriptions and then they put the stuff up for sale yeah, and some yeah. stuff. If you have a subscription, any subscription, you now get to buy stuff ahead of time. And if it sells out to people with subscriptions, it sells out. Oh, wow. That's nuts. Yeah. Cool. So, Golden ticket. Because they yeah. got two of them. So before we wrap up, is there any last? I mean, you, we, we could be here for hours telling stories of, yes, of parties yes, and cons could. and in Omar's adventures in Comic-Con and what Toby remembers of it. Um, <laughs> it seems like... Oh, actually... I think Lane had a funny story in one night. <laughs> I think, Lane, you have to tell that one because I didn't even know about it. Okay, we get, for Lane, you got to take us out? Take us out, Lane. Oh, yeah. No, Outro. Bad, he thinks it's funny. It's I just... think it's funny as hell when he told me in the morning because I had no idea that happened. I think, was it Saturday night? Uh, I think. It was sad because it was the night I saw Omar yeah, for like Saturday. five yeah, minutes. Yeah. And then I went to the Hyatt where I met the Sons of Anarchy guy partying, yeah, yeah. bunch of animation guys. And, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, you came back at like, what, 3, 3 a.m. Or, or something? Yeah. I was trying to sleep. Like, I had just fallen asleep. And in comes Toby. He turns on the lights, kind of stumbles around. And like, I don't know what the hell. Like, I'm half out, whatever. He says it's, I guess he said it was muggy. So he opened the, uh, like, we have this balcony. So he opens the balcony doors, and all of a sudden I hear his big thump. <laughs> and next thing, I just, I don't know why, but I'm half asleep. I thought he went over the edge. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Toby is dead! <laughs> what, what's disturbing is this dude just rolled over. He's like, I'll worry about it in the morning. <laughs> Fucking three o'clock in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> I just figured out he had too Knock much to drink off. again. <laughs> so what? what? Let, let's add, we were on the ninth floor? <laughs> <laughs> so, so what was the thump? I don't, I don't know. I, I think he. Um, <laughs> I think you hit your knee on the chair or on the. Uh, yeah, if you have a bruise, table. if you have a bruise, that's what that's what happened, bro. Yeah. It was uh, the guy above you just went over the side. So. <laughs> it could have oh, been. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, that was a good night. All right. Well, we're gonna record many, many more episodes of the podcast. Hopefully, so we, we if, missed. If you my guys big highlight. What's your big highlight? Yeah, zombie my run. Big fucking highlight. Oh, we didn't even talk about the Walking Dead zombie. Yeah, yeah that was huge. Oh, that was such a big this production. This is why I'm saying let's it just so outro it now and do the rest up. on YouTube. Well, we should hold off the zombies until Toby gets the uh, video footage. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We well, can. you know what? That will never happen. So why don't you guys talk about? <laughs> oh, <it? laughs> oh. Well, well, here, well, here, here. Tell you what. Tell you what. Next week we're going to talk about Walking Dead 100, the party, the sale, all that info. This would be a good thing. That's It'll, a good plug. Tomorrow, yeah, next week will be our Walking Dead episode. I would have whoever, right. whoever's here next week. We'll talk to Walking because I totally forgot about that because I want to hear all about that Walking Dead uh, marathon thing. Or uh, that was how many you guys course. did it? It was me. I I don't know what Charlie. Make it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, me, Nate, Maria. Uh, a lot of our friends. Brandon did it. Uh, he did it early. One of my stunt guys from LA did it. Uh, cool. I have to hear back from him. So I, I don't met, know. I've like seven of the zombies that were chasing you motherfuckers around. Dude, seven. Yeah. Try like hundred something. No, no, no. I mean that's why I met seven of them. Huh? And a lot of them are all like industry people, like all oh, like gaffers yeah, yeah. and writers or people that just like fans and want to dude. like hang out with Durbont and all the rest of the crew that were there. Yeah, it was, dude. It was cool. It was, it was cool. It was the highlight. Next week will be Walking Dead week. We'll we'll talk all about right. that. We'll talk about Walking Dead 100 and all that. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, I guess we will uh, wrap this up now, and next week we'll we'll continue. Uh, San Diego Part Two. So, be a lot more to talk about. Uh, if you I'll try to remember by then what actually happened, if you went to San Diego and you actually had some cool stories, you should email us at the comic conspiracy at geekbox.net or you can send us some info on geekbox.net and the contact uh, info page. You can send us, and we'll, yeah, if you have a cool San Diego story, tell us. We'll shoot us a message or something. We'll read it in the air next week. Um, you can go to geekbox.net for this episode and all the other episodes. Uh, Comicsconspiracy.biz is the store. Uh, site you can go there and buy some comic books we still have copies of walking dead uh 
this pat 100 pack up mm-hmm. um we're out of the chrome covers uh, we, but we don't have one. We don't. We're out of the Chrome covers, okay. um, but we have the regular pack, so I'll be adjusting that tomorrow, so I don't sell any more. Um, so you can go on there and buy those if you want to get some more Walking Dead 100. We get the full pack up. Um, go to what other what other people? Oh, so Conspiracy dot biz slash digital to uh, get your digital versions. There you go. That's good stuff there. It's actually digital dot comics. Whatever. Conspiracy biz. Close enough. I don't say it every week. Uh, comics and the kind. <laughs> Omar site. Yo, and what's up, Jay Dang? Thanks for all those retweets, <laughs> motherfucker. Yeah. Um, the Infinite Long Box. You guys doing a San Diego Con? No, I'm sure episode? we will have plenty to talk about. I'm the only one who made it this yeah, year. Yeah, I was going to say no one else went, huh? No, Jess had tickets, but he had family obligations that kind of messed up his plans. That sucks. And Jordan didn't go. Didn't he went? He went last year, right? Well, he went last year as Jess's plus one. Oh, okay, okay. Because <laughs> I remember because we were all hanging out at the, at the yeah. DC party. So. Yeah. Okay. Hopefully he'll make Taylor it next Dare? year. Yeah. Yes. We were fucked up, bro. We don't remember. <laughs> that was awesome party, awesome. though. <laughs> oh my god. I don't awesome. even remember shit. But that was an awesome party. That man. was. That's when we met Maggie Q. We partied it over her. Then so we fun. ran into Joe Matt. No, that Joe Matt was the night before. No, that was the same night, bro. Was it? <laughs> oh. So you, met that well, beautiful girl named Nico. Yeah. What's up, bad. Nico? Sorry. Yeah, you didn't Nico. We didn't see you. What's up to Radical, Radical Games? None of them made it. <laughs> What's up, so, Mark? So you can you can see my review on some of the stuff I read about at San Diego yeah. this week on my blog. Yes. Conspiratorbrock.com. Brock. Com. Brock talks about some stuff. You review yeah, about things you read on the internet? Hey, it's my opinion on it, man. You can... Uh, <laughs> look at what this girl puts her cell phone you can bother us all on Twitter. A special, special cell phone holder. You can borrow us. You can uh, borrow us. Borrow you, us. You, you borrow can bother. You can borrow Ryan. You can bother us all on Twitter. Uh, I'm Ryan Higgins. Ryan uh, Brock is Brock, Brock Sager. Sager. Comics of the Kind is Omar. Toby X I is Toby. Insanity in Chaos is Charlie. Jim, no Twitter. Lane, no Twitter. You guys get with the revolution. Come on, guys. It's the only thing that. Matters. So I share my Lane story that relates zombies. Today or next time? Save it. All right. We'll do it next. We'll do it next. Time. But he's not here to defend it, maybe. That's funnier, maybe. I don't All know. Right. I don't know. All we'll right. see. Blade's given the questioning luck, <laughs> so. That's okay. I'm just picturing there'll be a follow-up discussion in the shop that anybody who comes down to the shop will get. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No. I'm, in San Diego, we could talk. I mean, I hear about San Diego all year long after it happens, so. Yep. We'll have Until the lot, next one happens. Yeah, we'll have a lot more to talk about next week, probably. So, All right. Um, we'll see everyone next week. Thanks for listening.